All right, this is Mr. Poggio, and if you're following along, this is the instructions for task number five. That's right, we're getting there, task number five, which is your epidemic model plus sliders and procedure calls. So to get started, you're going to see your space line not only has task number four, which is your uh, proportion and your research and your data that is going to be ready to set up when we press setup. But now we're going to have these new things called sliders, which you see over here. So I have a slider for population, transmission, and recovery. And everything that I'm going to go over with you guys is already on our Coding Corona PowerPoint. So if you go to your Coding Corona PowerPoint, you'll see that we are, I think we're somewhere around 50 because you just finished your test. And I told you that your uh, task number four, there was no new code whatsoever. It was just setting up your epidemic model through research. And now we're going to get into this idea of epidemiology and the spread of disease and creating sliders, using slicer, sliders to determine whether or not an agent could pass a disease or not. Like, for example, uh, there could be a higher transmission rate for coronavirus when nobody really knew about it in January and February or maybe more fair to say is did not know uh, as much about it as we know today as compared to uh, March when we started at the end of March taking social distancing and quarantining more seriously. The transmission rate changed, it obviously lowered. So that's what we're going to use sliders for. And we're also going to uh, talk about recovery rates and instead of a slider for recovery rate, we're going to use something called a procedural call. So this procedure going to tell your red sick turtles to recover and so you will either recover and become yellow um, and at this case it looks like it's fair to say a uh, high 90 percent rate is even up to 99 percent higher uh, are the recovery rates for anybody who is infected with coronavirus i know that a lot of that depends on age and population and other factors but in general I think the death rate, it looks like to be um, hopefully lower than 1%, but maybe uh, in the range of up to 5% in certain countries or populations, depending on um, population of your choice. But you're also going to have your sick agents either recover or die. So in order to do this, um, a little bit of a uh, dive into epidemiology, which is the study of diseases, which is what's going on now with coronavirus. And one way epidemiologists try to study the spread of disease is running through simulations. And that's what I've been asking you guys to do. And then they could test and understand different measures. This, this isn't a, a brand new thing. There's already people now that are trying to use uh, the same concept we are with coding corona through simulation to understand what's going on uh, with coronavirus. And I thought I'd just bring up uh, MRSA. MRSA is a, a specific type of staph. So um, this is like a staph infection. That's like the great looking things there that you see at the bottom. But it actually is resistant to many, many different type of antibiotics. So this is a uh, interesting um, disease where we have to treat it very, very, very specifically because in certain places uh, it's hard to uh, eradicate when there's an outbreak because there's no medicine to prevent it or uh, strong enough um, antibiotics that can be used in a wide range for a big population. So staph infections are uh, they gross, they get on the skin, and actually large percent uh, get pretty bad, but most everybody actually has, 30% uh, of us has small colonies of it in, in small forms, but it does get to the point for some people where um, that staph infection could grow and actually they could die from it up to 3%. And it spreads just like coronavirus through physical contact. However, coronavirus now, um, I think it's pretty fair to say it's not just uh, contact, but also airborne as well. And treating it, a um, little bit different than coronavirus, but this is a more skin related, so that means keeping it dry and cleaned, and of course using the appropriate antibiotic as it's resistance to some, resistant to some antibiotics. And just like any uh, cycle, you're going to go through a susceptible or possibly healthy person where that uh, disease colonizes, and once those cells colonize, uh, that infection rate increases and has the opportunity to infect others as well because. Uh, the colony is large enough to spread to another host. And now we're going to take this idea of MRSA, which is an infectious disease, 
apply it to our task five computer modeling for the coronavirus. So here's your ultimate task. Your task today is to make sure your epidemic model has the appropriate colored agents. You need blue for healthy, red for infected, yellow for immune, which you could have recover with a procedural call, or you could just start immune. In fact, my uh, model, I, I have a percentage of humans that start immune. And black would represent dead, uh, super sick, or on a ventilator. Let's try to keep to these colors so that we all understand our models when we're looking at each other's. And you're gonna have one conditional. It's the same one from two colliding turtles. When a blue hits a red, there is a transmission slider or a random possibility, depending on your research, to decide if blue becomes red because of the infection rate of the disease of coronavirus at the time. This slider is how you will hypothesize your future of your population because the infectious the infection rate um, on your transmission slider, which uh, will ultimately tell what happens with that disease in your specific population. So this is going to be how you're going to tell your story and the future of the transmission slider. Now your procedures, your procedures, uh, I'm going to ask you to do two. When a turtle turns red, that means they're infected. They have a 99% chance or close to there. Remember we said there's about a 1% to maybe even 5% in Italy was pretty high. Uh, but maybe uh, up to max 5% death rate. So in this case, I could say 99% or close turn yellow or recover, while 1% turn black or die. So most of your reds up to, you know, 95 to 99% should be turning yellow through the procedural call. And In this new lesson, we're going to talk about those variables and procedures, and we're going to turn on colliding turtles to make a model into this epidemic model, and adding this widget that we call a slider, and using the slider to hold or uh, create a value, which we're going to use as the transmission rate. And this rate is the percentage of time a disease gets passed from one person to another. So again, we're going to slide up a slider that looks just like that, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. When we set up a procedural call, this is not a slider, it's different, it's called a procedure. We can add a new procedure to our code. We just have to remember, like in the top right where it shows there, to make the call in R when setup is pushed or when forever is toggled. And to do that, we're going to go to this new area and create widgets. You'll see you can create tons of different widgets. You're going to um, you're going to understand that now that you know how to tell agents what to do, being able to control what's going on with widgets brings a whole new realm of coding. So this is really a, a deeper level of understanding code. And I like to use for most of my widgets 0 to 100 because for me that represents 0% to 100%. But I guess you could use any value you'd like. And here's your transmission rate. You'll see you have to identify it as a transmission rate. So um, you have to be able to tell that or the socket will be empty. And also we want to try to make this uh, a variable rate or random. So that's how the transmission slider can be used. Here's some code to help you out uh, with your... A random chance. So in this case, we're saying if something happens uh, randomly uh, with the number 100, is it going to be less than the transmission rate value? So if your slider has a random number from 0 to 200, well, we could say there is a 50% chance because 100 divided by 200 is 50% chance of setting your color to red. Now, if it was a, if your transmission slider is at 100, well, then anything 100 or lower would still be less than 100. So you have to be very, very particular with your values in your socket for your random and your transmission rate. You're gonna save your test and model, and uh, you're eventually going to share that with me. You're gonna add a recovery also, and you're gonna add that recovery because people sometimes do uh, and especially with Corona, will recover from the disease. And remember, we said that's as high as 99%. And here's how you're going to add the recovery with that blue call or purple. Sorry, it's not blue, it's purple recovery call. And you could actually add a slider inside of that, but uh, we'll talk about that uh, on an individual basis as you're coding your specific population. And some help with adding your recovery. So there you go. There's the exact same. It doesn't change much. Uh, it's literally, you could just copy it instead of your recovery rate. Uh, previously, we had our transmission rate. Make sure to save that. And that's pretty much our whole model. I want to make sure you understand how you're doing that. 
uh, you're just going to go up to this area and interface. I know before we were looking all the way down to the bottom where the code was at, but I'm not going to show you that in this video. I might show it to you in the model. But you're going to click edit interface right here. And when you edit interface, you have this new button that says create widget. When you hit create widget, you have a bunch of different options. You can even lock and unlock your camera. So that's how you can move your camera around. Uh, you could also change its angle. If you didn't know that, that's how you make it a 3D look. So you could give it an angle. I'm having trouble sizing it right now, but you should be able to make it bigger and smaller as well. Uh, so you could totally change your uh, three-dimensional look on it. But always make sure you lock interface because if you ever edit interface and you click the setup button and you delete your setup button, you will have to make a new setup button or you will never be able to set up your space land. So remember, these are all widgets too. And uh, once you X out, please one more time, hit lock interface, but that's how you're gonna create your widgets. And when you look down at your code, I think I showed you guys the purple call button for your procedures. I think that's enough tips right now. I think you could take a look at some of your code now that I helped you out. And you can add these sliders right here and then make sure that you include those in the sockets in your conditionals for what I showed you most specifically. I believe it is slide if we look at this really quick. Right now we're at slide, is that 65? Slide 65, that's gonna have very specific instructions for uh, coding colors, conditionals, and procedures for task number five, which is your epidemic model with sliders and procedural calls. So I hope that helped. I didn't give you, uh, I didn't show you my code, but I hope I gave you a bunch of coding tips. Good luck and let me know if you have any issues. You could always email me. See ya, Mr. Pojo.